Okay, so we've done the carving, and now we're gonna jump in the painting, right? We're gonna paint one of these guys up, and the other one, you're gonna go ahead and do walnut oil and Danish oil if you want to, or you can paint this one. If you're gonna do the Danish oil, you can go watch the how to do Danish oil video I've got the channel, but if you wanna paint them, we're gonna do that right now. Time for the money shot. When we did Mary, we did a blending of colors from the bottom up, but for Joseph, we're gonna go for dry brushing. If you haven't done dry brushing before, you can use whatever color you want to, but the dark color should be in the base, the lighter color should be the one you dry brush on top of it. So in the bottom, we went with a darker brown on the base, lighter brown on the dry brushing. Same thing for the turban. I'll show you how to do that. Welcome back. We are now doing our painting video. For those of you who haven't seen a painting video before, where have you been? All right, so for Joseph, we're gonna paint one of these and then we're going to do the staining with the other one, just like we did with Mary, but the one we just finished carving is this guy. So we're probably gonna stain this fella with the black walnut Danish oil and then wax. And this guy here, we're gonna paint. And I'm going to paint his coat with this burnt umber from Apple Barrel. And then we're going to dry brush him with this coffee grounds, Cafe Malou. So with the uh, Virgin Mary, we did a little bit of blending. With this one, we're gonna do some dry brushing and practice that. For the turban, we're gonna dry brush that. We're gonna do coffee ground base, and then we're gonna dry brush with light buttermilk. So for the robe itself, we're gonna base with the darker, dry brush with the lighter, and then we're gonna base the turban with the darker and dry brush with the lighter. Always dry brush with a lighter color on top and it comes out looking pretty good. And for the face, of course, we need this warm beige. And for that bottom band right there, if we're going to do the two darker browns, we're going to do that light buttermilk again, just for that bottom band, I think. And uh, burnt umber here, right there for the beard. Uh, should we do that? Or should we do the beard? No, I want to do the beard brown, but I want to do the darker brown. So what color are we going to use? We need to separate it from the shirt, but not have it be... Yeah, we may start to change the colors here up. What all do I have here? That is a different type of burnt umber. That's still a burnt umber. What's this? That's burnt umber too. All my dark browns burnt umber? I think so. So let's do portobello. Let's do burnt umber for the beard. We'll do portobello for the robe. Like buttermilk for the turban. And then we'll dry brush the robe with honeycomb rather than the coffee grounds. Let's look for the coffee grounds back. Okay. So here's what we're doing. We've changed things up. Burnt umber and portobello. So base and then dry brush. And then for the turban, we will do honeycomb, and then light buttermilk, right? And for that bottom line, we're gonna do light buttermilk. So, start with the burnt umber. Let's go ahead and jump in. There we go. And we're not dry brushing yet. The turban will be this color. We can get a little bit of that in there too. Okay, now I like to mix my paints on the carving a little bit so we're going to paint the whole base here all with our burnt umber no i didn't say burnt umber portobello i was about to make a mistake why didn't you catch me why didn't you say something say johnny don't do that I can't believe you just sat there silently not saying a thing okay cleaning the brush out There we go. Okay, now portobello and honeycomb for the robe. Okay, so I got paint on there, I dipped it in water, and now we're just doing the portobello. And that's looking good. That's, I'm glad I picked that color, that's gonna work out just fine. And the dry brush, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Yeah. Yep. I'm excited. We're just gonna get right up underneath that turban, but not get up on it. 
that is not a problem. There we go. And right up underneath the beard too. But don't get on the beard. And like that, we're cooking with Crisco. So, for those of you who like this kind of thing, like this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. Also, while we're talking about it, head over to Instagram. Give me a follow there. I don't bite, and uh, if you follow me over there, you get a chance to see what all I'm cooking up or working on, and get asked questions a little bit easier in the comment section, and uh, we can interact. I like following other wood carvers, seeing what people are coming up with. And you can follow the other wood carvers that are there too, get involved in the wood carving community a little bit. It's a great thing getting involved in this community. This community is really a fantastic community. But if you weren't sure about it, this is your personal invitation from me to you. Come on down. Okay, so we got a good base there. And I'm going to pause it and then I'm going to blow dry him to dry him up. And we're back. Now that's all dry, we're going to do the turbine. So we're gonna do coffee grounds as the base on the turbine. And then we're gonna dry brush with the lighter cut. Do I already have coffee grounds in here, Johnny? Okay. See, if you guys wouldn't let me mess up there in the beginning, we wouldn't have this issue. I can't believe that you did that to me. I thought we were cooler than that. So there we go. Coffee grounds going on. Really though, next time you should speak up sooner. <laughs> Why do I think it's so funny to blame someone who can't talk back to me? I don't know. I don't have a great sense of humor. I have a sense of humor. It's just broken. That's what it is. It's not a great sense of humor. So don't blame me. Blame my parents. They made me this way. This is their fault, honestly. Right? Or maybe it's my children's fault. Maybe they've broken my sense of humor through sheer, I don't know, haphazardry. Is that a word? Haphazardry? Okay. Just like I said, painting and mixing the paint on the carving as I go here. I get a little paint, I get a little water, and I'm holding it upside down so that as it drains, if it drains and like runs, it's running to the tip of the, the head and not down on the carvings that I painted different color already, right? Because I've already got most of that robe done a different color. Try to get up a little bit underneath this hood. I'm not gonna put a little bit of, bit of water on it as I do this section here. I don't want to run get underneath that hood a little bit like so there we go well, that did pretty well I think he's starting to come together but yeah we'll dry brush this and it'll give him a good contrast okay so now we are going to pause and we're gonna hair dry again Okay, welcome back. Same bad time, same bad channel. Now we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of brown. That burnt umber. That was the hairbrush falling, if you heard that. A little bit of burnt umber on the beard. And I'm using this detail brush. If you've seen a painting video, you know this is a detail brush from Coco Land. And that doesn't matter at all because it's just a small detail brush. I don't care what brand it is. I have no preference in brand. But this brand does seem to work okay for me. Only which I'm using is because it has smaller bristles, which lets me be a little more delicate in painting someplace like this right here. I probably should have curved that beard a bit more before I finished rounded that bottom edge. Remember we talked about how we shouldn't leave hard edges, right? Only good carvers round all their edges. Like a terrible carver, he'll leave those hard edges where they shouldn't be, like me. <laughs> yeah, so don't be like me. Go ahead and fix it on yours. 
You can make yours look better than mine, and you should learn from my inexperience on this. This is my uh, my second time carving Joseph. You know, by virtue of the way this works, you could have carved him many more times than I have. Right now, you could have done it multiple times. Do that, make use of it. I do like the stylistic choice here of not putting a face on him. I like that. It keeps it simple for someone who's new. So I think the people that might not have attempted this will attempt it. And I think it's very appropriate, right? He, Joseph is well, he's not the Virgin Mary, but he's still a very important figure in uh, religions in our world. And you want to be very cognizant of that and respectful. I think it looks fantastic. He's coming together. Okay, so now we got all our base coats done. We're gonna dry that up one more time, and then we'll be looking at dry brushing the uh, the, the top and the, the base here, and we'll see how we go. And we'll paint that base there a little different color. So one more time with the hair dryer. Okay, so for dry brushing, I have what we call here an, an oval mop, and it's by a company called Master's Touch. This is where I actually care about my brushes. You can see like this is a, a newer one, right? Oh, hit the thing again. This is the exact same brush, <laughs> but this one's newer. And look how much longer the bristles are. That's because I've used this for dry brushing so much, okay? So they start to wear out a bit. Dry brushing is very rough on a brush. That's something to keep in mind. Now, the burnt umber here, what we're gonna do is, let's make sure you can see exactly what we're doing, because dry brushing is a unique art. I love the effect that dry brushing can have on a carving. We're gonna take that oval mop, and we're just going to dip it in the brown paint here. Get a little bit soaked in. And then I'm just going to rub that brown off the brush. And we're going to keep doing this until we don't leave much paint on the brush. Right? It's starting to thin out a bit. And that's probably a good spot right there. And then we're just going to go over the carving like this. Getting it kind of heavy in spots, lighter in others. And that's going to give this robe life. It's going to give it texture. It's going to make him pop in ways that he wouldn't without it. You can start to see that effect right now, I'm sure. What do you think? It's starting to come alive. It looks a little dirty, doesn't he? It'll look better, I promise. It's going to work out. Just trust me on it. Go ahead and commit. Go ahead and commit to it. Okay. So we've about got that done. We dry brushed the heck out of him on the base there. Now we're gonna do ahead and do the same thing and we're gonna draw we're gonna hair dry again. So one moment. And we're back. Okay, we hair dried him up. Now we need to clean our oval mop because we're gonna use that to dry brush the turban as well. Uh, wiping it up, dipping it in the water and shaking it around. We got a lot cleaner, but it's not clean enough. Just keep rubbing it in. And this is what probably kills the bristles is this kind of maneuver too. You could make this brush last longer, but you know, cost a crazy amount of money. And this one's lasted me, what, eight or nine months of using it. And I've been carving a lot lately. Painting a lot, this whole time. That's getting pretty good. Now here's the thing too that you need to watch out for when you're dry brushing. It needs to be dry. You can't do this with a wet brush, okay? So rub it off in your hand to get some that water out of there if you need to. Back on the carving, or back on the paper towel. I'm gonna get a new paper towel out that we can use to dry the paint off with. This one here is wet, and if we use that paper towel that's wet, 
We're going to wind up getting a little bit of water on the carving in a spot, but we don't want it. Okay. Now, we're going to get out our light buttermilk. Right, like so. And then we're going to dry brush that turban with the buttermilk. And maybe a little bit in the beard too. That might give it a little, a nice little effect. We will see. It's gonna be harder to see this light buttermilk when you're trying to clean the brush off because it's a white color or a very light color. Okay? So you gotta be mindful, be very careful to look. With the lighter colors too, less is more so go as wide as you can and be very careful here if you don't know if you got it off enough gently and then a little bit more firmly as you go see and i'm going from bottom to top on this i want to create like a bit of a pattern with those strokes all the way up to the top and i keep going all the way around And then across the top as well. And a bit harder this time. There we go, a bit firmer. do that beard as well not lightly heavy a little texture to that beard too I really like the way this got turned out okay so we got that done now let's take our detail brush again clean it out and we're gonna paint that bottom ring right there with that light buttermilk. Actually, we're going to use the same brush we used to paint the robe. A little bit bigger, and it'll go a little bit faster. And that's not a problem at all. Yep, that's going to be a good color for this. The trim, add a bit of contrast to the carving. I'm not watering this down at all on this section here. Yes applying it directly. And remember all this painting, the, the color choices here, this is preference. You do it how you want to. Your mileage may vary. You may decide you want to use different colors, do different colors. But keep in mind that dry brushing is an option you can do and it really has some neat effects. Be very careful to get that top edge to that trim as well. Like so, all the way around. There we go. I like the way that's gonna look. Okay, now for the, the face, I'm gonna paint that with a light beige. You can absolutely leave that completely bare. You don't have to put any paint there whatsoever if you want to. Especially if you're going to use boiled linseed oil, because a little bit of boiled linseed oil will give that a, a really nice coloring. But I'm going to use that antiquing solution that I've made. If you want to know about the antiquing solution, i got a video on it called Turd Polish. And that antiquing solution has raw umber paint, or burnt umber paint, it's got raw umber paint mixed into it. Raw umber. And uh, it's going to wind up coloring all of the carving, darkening it and antiquing it, looking really nice. So before I do that, I want to make sure I have the skin tone in there because otherwise it'll darken that wood up too much. So I'm drying this paintbrush off, cleaning it, and I'm just going to put unwatered down beige right in here. Just like so. There we are. He's really gonna turn out pretty neat, I think. Okay, now something else we can do is we can take any paintbrush we want. Let's go ahead and do a harder one here. Get a little paint on there. 
Now we're going to go ahead and shadow these deep corners here with a heavier paint. Like so. Anything there. And then, uh, yeah. Into that corner right there behind there and around the waist. Okay. You can do your finger to smooth it out a bit more. Right? I saw Sarah Terraclaw do this in a painting video that she did, and man, it looks really neat. I like the effect of that. So, I love adapting other people's techniques. So we all have little things we do, little tricks we do, and when we start including them, other people's stuff in ours, we can really expand our own repertoire. But, we got that darker colored paint in those crevices, I think it's gonna look fantastic. Okay, so he's ready for the antiquing solution, I think. All right, bear with me. Okay, and there he is, all antiqued up. I think he turned out pretty well. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the dry brushing effect on the robe and the hat and just, uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. So, there's him. Now, for our other Joseph, right, this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do Danish oil and wax on him. I've got a whole video on that, uh, how to apply Danish oil and wax. So take a look at that video on how to apply Danish oil and wax, and you'll be able to see how to do this properly, or how, how I do this, I should say, because there's different ways of applying this kind of stuff. But uh, it's pretty easy, not too hard. You're going to knock that out pretty easy. Um, I do like that finish too. So let's go ahead and do the money shot and you'll see how that looks. And there they are all finished up looking fantastic. I'm really excited about this whole series. I like the way these figures are turning out. I like this flat plain Scandinavian style. And I just think that they're fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then go over and follow me on Instagram. If you'd like to and you want to help support the channel, head over to Etsy and buy some of those carving stickers I had made. There's a couple different varieties. Some say, uh, <coughs> do you even carve or uh, carving sticker? And then I got some uh, wood carvings by Johnny stickers as well. So they're all over there on Etsy if you'd like to buy some. There's free shipping on them. They cost five bucks a piece. And the proceeds for that are just going to help me buy a new camera because I want to get a, a better high definition camera that I can use to record this stuff. And that's what we're working towards. Other than that, I really appreciate your time. And don't forget to click on these other videos on the screen here so you can watch more stuff on the channel. Have a great day. Bye.